Hello and welcome to today's lesson. I'm your hard-working but indefatigable teacher, Mr. Burton. You will need to watch this video and take notes as you go. You may need to watch certain parts of the video a few times to ensure complete understanding. This is your homework and I will check your notes tomorrow before we get started. I hope you learned something. Okay, hello and welcome to, today, to today's lesson. Today we are looking at another of these balance day adjustments and this time we're looking at accrued income and expenses. So at the end of today's lesson, the things we need to know are whether a transaction is an accrued expense or an accrued income. After we've done that identification, we need to record the relevant balance day adjustment in our journal and then prepare the relevant financial statement extracts. Okay, accrued expenses. When a business records an expense during the accounting period, the amount of the expense must be for the amount incurred and not just what has been paid. So, what accounting concept is being applied? Accrual accounting. Recording revenues when they're earned and not when they're received in cash. And recording expenses when the expense is incurred and not when the expense is paid. So if a business has not paid for an expense, uh, has an expense on the books but it hasn't paid for it, what must it have? It's a liability which is a present obligation of the business as a result of past events, a transaction, which are expected to result in an outflow of resources representing economic benefits when settled at a later date in the future. We call the liability accrued expenses. Let's have a look at an example. Bob's Biscuit owes its employees $400 for wages. So, thinking about this, will the wages account have to be increased or decreased? Is that going to be a debit or a credit? Wages account will need to be increased. The employees have done their work. We, the business, now owe them for that work. So wages and expense that's gone up, it must be a debit, and on the other side, the accrued expense, we've just identified as a liability, that's going up $400 as well. Debit, credit, everything's balancing in that accounting equation of ours. In the income statement, this will be an administration expense, AE. And in the balance sheet, it's gonna be a current liability. And let's have a look at accrued income now. When a business records income during the accounting period, the amount of the income must be the amount earned and not just what's been received. And what accounting concept is being applied here? Again, it's accrual accounting. Recording revenues when they are earned and not when they're received in cash. So, if we have earned some revenue but haven't received the cash yet, this will turn up in our balanced adjustments. Uh, crude income. The business has not received income that has been earned by the business, so what must it have? It must be an asset. A resource controlled by the business as a result of past events, again a transaction, from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the business. And this asset is termed accrued income. Let's have a look at an example. Bob's Biscuit owns shares in a company and is owed $1,000 for dividends. So think to yourself, will a dividends received account have to be increased or decreased, debited or credited. So dividends received, that's income, and the income needs to be increased. 
So that's a debit and dividends received. Oh, sorry, that's an asset. The asset's increasing accrued income. And the dividends received, this is our income. And the income statement is going to be under other income, dividends received. And in the balance sheet, the accrued income will be a current asset.